Hey everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome back to Bleach Brave Souls. Today, we're going to talk about the future of BBS. Well, kind of. We're going to talk about what can they do after Dangai Ichigo. And, you know, like most of you all, I was, when they announced Dangai Ichigo, uh, Hogyoku Aizen, and uh, Barrigan, my first reaction was, I was hype as fuck. You know, I was like, I, I, the hype level was off the charts. But after a day or two, and I calmed down, and I thought about it some more, the second reaction was, this is coming a little bit too early for me. Um, you know, Dangai Ichigo and uh, the, the Hogyoku-fused Aizen, those are the final characters of, of the series. I mean, well, there's still the Fullbringer art, but, you know, that's whatever. Um, these two characters are the main, like, the pinnacle characters of the... Uh, of the whole, um, you know, Aizen arc. So, I kind of feel like they might have rushed it a little bit, because I feel like there's still a, quite a few characters that they could have put in first before they did these two. And now that they've already put these two characters in the game, like, it's gonna seem like everything after that will be a little bit uh, anticlimactic, you know? How can you top Dangai Ichigo and Aizen? We know right now that there is a gacha that's coming out after Dangai Ichigo, which has Bankai Kensei, uh, past Shinji in his captain uniform, and uh, Urahara Kisuke. And I'm assuming that Kisuke will be the one that fought Aizen uh, with, alongside Yoroichi and um, uh, Ishin. Um, and by the way guys, before, uh, before we get any further, I gotta mention, if you're not caught up with the manga or the anime, there's probably gonna be quite a few spoilers, so um, if that's something that you're worried about, you might want to not watch the rest of this video. But anyway, uh, moving on, uh, they are releasing a gacha with these three new characters after Dangai Ichigo. I don't know guys, I mean, I, to be honest, I, I like the characters, but like I said before, after Dangai Ichigo, it seems like, you know, it's like, it's like, it's like the hype level is down. If they were going to do this, I felt I feel like they should have released these characters first and then Dangai Ichigo at the very end. But that being said, I had another problem with uh, the early release of these characters. And it's that we didn't get a version of Aizen in his Hueco Mundo, um, whatever, his white robe outfit thing. I don't know what you would call it. But his Hueco Mundo uniform uh, that you see here. Um, now, Aizen was in this outfit for... I would say like a good chunk of the series and I feel like they really should have gave him a character in game where he's wearing this outfit. Uh, you know, there's so many things, there's so many powers you could do for a specialist, for special attacks and uh, strong attacks and it's really his iconic look and for them to skip that seems kind of uh, like an oversight to me. I mean, not that, not that the item they put in is any less awesome, but I really feel like they should have had this version in as well. Um, just because he's he's in it for like a majority of the story. And I don't think it would make sense for them to release this version afterwards because they've already released the best version of Aizen. So, you know, who's going to want to have another version of Aizen that's weaker? I mean, I'd still like it because, you know, I'm a big Bleach fan, but, uh, you know, he's, he's probably going to be not as powerful. So it's not going to be as hype and it's just the wrong timing for it. Uh, they, they did this with Okiora too. Okiora's first release, this one here, actually is in the game. And he's uh, a boss in, uh, I think it's chapter 8. But he's not a playable character. Uh, they went straight to the uh, Segunda Atapa. So I feel like they could have released this version of Okiora as well. But, um, you know, maybe it's the fact that they don't want to release too many versions of the same character. I don't know. But I guarantee you people would have been hyped for, you know, a first release Okiora or a, you know, Hueco Mundo, Aizen, uh, things like that. So anyway, with that out of the way, guys, what I want to do in this video is speculate on what characters could come after the, uh, the Kensei, Shinji, and Urahara gacha. And for this video, I'm only going to stick to canon characters. Uh, that those being characters that are either in the manga or in the main storyline of the anime. So I'm not, I'm not going to mention filler characters like they could do more Zanpakuto filler characters. You know, they could probably do more different Valentine's Day or White Day characters. Uh, I'm going to skip stuff like that. And we're just going to stick to the canon story. Um, you know, I'm not going to go over characters that were in like 
the different filler arcs like the uh the nozomi arc or the uh, the bonto arc um you know if you guys want to hear my thoughts on that I, I could probably do another video on speculating on what filler characters uh, they could include but this video is just going to be canon characters so what are the criteria for a five-star character um i'm sure that k-lab uses a variety of you know criteria to decide whether a character should or should not be a five-star and i think that the main uh requirement for a five-star character is that they be popular uh you know that's why you, we haven't seen five-star versions of characters like uh Aaron Nairo or zomari i mean these characters you know they're they're a spada and they're you know the top 10 but they're just you know kind of uh, minor characters i would say uh, maybe they would warrant a four-star version or something like that but if you had a gotcha with like zomari and Aaron Nairo, i'm not sure how hype people would be for that i'm sure they, people would be happy but you know you don't want to have mediocre characters in a banner so maybe they would put these characters in at four stars at some point i don't know um, they are already in the game kind of as boss characters but uh, i want to skip characters that are are not very popular because it's a really low probability that k-lab would put them in a banner um, also i think for a five-star character k-lab looks at the the character's part in the story and kind of looks at how important they are to the story so if a character is not very important to the plot, uh, it's unlikely that they would get a five-star version. And once again, guys, these are just my opinions. Um, I don't know that these are the criteria that K-Lab uses, but it seems like that's the way it is. So there's characters that are in the story that don't have five-star versions, but you know these characters aren't very um, you know important to the plot. I would say, um, not to say that they're unimportant but they're just not uh, as important as some of the other characters. So characters like Wonderweiss, who is actually in the game right now in Chapter 10, or uh, Lil Annette, who is also in Chapter 10, uh, they would probably not get five stars unless maybe it's in a metal exchange. Um, I could see Lil Annette being in a metal exchange. And, um, you know, there's characters, minor characters that are kind of just like comic relief characters that they might put in a metal exchange, metal exchange like um, maybe Totsuki, or um, the, the Afro-san, you know, the substitute Shinigami um, that's in Karakura Town. Uh, and they, they could appear in the game as metal characters or as, you know, just special event characters, something like that. But for this video, I'm gonna list five canon characters that have a good shot, in my opinion, of being five-star characters. So let's get started, guys. In at number five, guys, and he's gotta be in the game because he is the Zero Espada. And it's Yami Rigaldo. Uh, I hope I said that right. And Yami, you know, not, not a lot of people like Yami, I don't think. He's not very popular, but supposedly, supposedly, and there's debate on this topic, Yami is the most powerful Espada. He's like the top ranked Espada when he releases. So I feel like just for completionist sake, he needs to be in the game as a five star. Um, there's a lot they could do with Yami. He has his big, huge Caterpillar release. Um, he has even a release after that, uh, which, uh, you know, you, we, don't, we didn't really see too much of in the manga. But, you know, that's an option for a, a special move or something. And Yami's already in the game, guys. He's been in the game since, like, what, chapter 5 or 4? So, um, you know, the, the, the only thing is that he's not that popular. So, you know, he has an outside chance of making it as a 5-star. Um, I wouldn't say it's a high chance, but he is kind of important in the story. You know, he, he, he does play a big role uh, throughout the whole arc, actually. And um, I feel like he needs to be in the game. You know, at the very least, he should be a four star. Moving on, guys, to number four, we have Kaname Tosin. Now, how could they release Dangai Ichigo and Aizen before, you know, we had a proper version of Kaname? Uh, Kaname is like, he's one of the main three villains, you know, it's, it's Aizen, Gin, and Kaname. Uh, I feel like, you know, this is an oversight and to put him in the game after Dangai Ichigo and, uh, and Final Form Aizen, well, not Final Form Aizen, but, um, you know, Hogyo Confused Aizen, uh, it doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, it sh he should be in the game already, actually, like, um, you know, he, maybe he should have been in the game when they released uh, Hisagi. 
because uh, you know Hisagi played a role in the battle against Kaname. And uh, if they were to put Kaname in, they do have a couple of options. Uh, they have his, you know, his regular Hueco Mundo outfit with the sleeveless shirt. And uh, they also have his first stage of his resurrection, which, you know, that would look kind of cool as well. Uh, you know, ideally I'd like to see both of them, but you know, I doubt that would happen unless, you know, they, they, they start really scrambling for characters and um, have no other choices, but they, they should put at least one version of Kaname in. And, you know, I mean, the, the one they have now is cool, but you know, that's that's when he was still a captain and we're so much further along in the game now that uh, you know he needs a better version um so ideally i would like to see him in the uh, you know the sleeveless wake mundo um you know the robes that he wears for most of the series but uh, if they did a resurrection for him i think that would be pretty hype and uh, you know they could do the special where he turns into the uh the big insect uh what, what i forget what it's called um grigio I, I i'm not even gonna try to pronounce it but uh the insect you see here. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of options for Kaname. And he's the main villain, so he needs to be in the game ASAP. Like, he should have been in the game already, in my opinion. All right, guys, so anyway, enough about Kaname. Uh, now, the next character is... Unless you're a big fan of Bleach, you might have overlooked this character. This is my sleeper pick for, you know, a, a, a gotcha banner character. Technically, you could break this character up into three different versions. The character I'm talking about is Young Zangetsu. Now, this character would be freaking awesome in the game. We have the old version of Zangetsu that you can get from the Metal Exchange, but if you read the manga and watch the anime, when Ichigo is training in the in the Dangai to become Dangai Ichigo, uh, he meets up in his inner world with Zangetsu once again, and. When he sees him, Zangetsu is a younger man. And as you can see here, guys, he looks pretty freaking hype. I don't know what else I can say about him, but, is, but that would be a really, I, I think a lot of people would be interested in this character. He has an awesome design. He's like pretty important to Ichigo's development in the story. So if they did him, I think a lot of people would go for it. I would go for it. He, he's, he looks, I love the character design of young Zangetsu. Um, but, Another part of Young Zangetsu is in the inner world battle that Ichigo is, uh, you know, when he's training for Mugetsu, there's also a version of White Ichigo, as the game calls him. And this version of White Ichigo, as they call him in game, is pretty much the same as uh, Full Hollow Ichigo that we got in Decisive Battle, except uh, it seems like the colors are reversed on his mask and he's wearing a Huekamundo White outfit. And I don't know, guys, maybe they could do these characters in a gotcha by themselves. Like, they could do young Zangetsu, they could do the, you know, full hollow white Zangetsu, I guess you would call them. <laughs> and you could do a third version as well. Uh, the third version is when they fuse. When Ichigo is trying to learn the final Getsu Gatensho, uh, the young Zangetsu and the hollow Zangetsu, I suppose I'll call them for now. Uh, they fuse into one being, and it has a pretty pretty unique design. Though I don't think they would do like all three of these characters. Uh, you know, maybe they would use one of them as a special. I don't know. They could do all three characters. Like I said, you could have young Zangetsu. You could have uh, full hollow white Zangetsu, uh, and you could have the fused version. So you know, maybe. That could be a possibility. I know that BBS is very faithful to the manga or and the anime, so there's an outside shot that this could happen. I kind of doubt it. Let's cross our fingers because I think these characters would be hype. All right, guys, so we're coming down to the final two, and since they're releasing an Urahara, uh, a version of Urahara where he fought Aizen, uh, they sh and they already have Ishin where he fought Aizen from the Legendary Captains, I kind of feel like Yoruichi in this battle armor would be the next logical step. Uh, as you can see here, this, I mean, these aren't great images of her, but she's in her like uh, leotard type outfit and she has these big uh, armored fists and armored boots. And this character would go well with the Urahara because this is the way they looked when they fought Aizen. And, you know, Yoruichi is a fairly popular character, so I think there's a good chance of that happening. Uh, not much, not really much more to say about it than that. Um, you know, I would love to see another Yoruichi. Uh, you know, she's she's probably one of my favorite female characters. So, 
Yoruichi in battle armor at number two. Now guys, for the final character that I would love to see in the game. And this character I cannot believe has not had a, a five star version yet. A proper canon five star version. And that character I'm talking about is Kuchiki Rukia. Now, Rukia is arguably, arguably guys, the leading female character in the series. And she has had five star versions. She's got a, a Halloween version and a uh, Valentine's Day version, which I think is five star, but she hasn't had a proper canon version. And I don't know what the heck they're doing with this because Rukia is like, she's top three female characters for me. Maybe number one. I would probably put her in number one. And look, for them not to have put her in the game yet, um, I don't know what their reasoning is. I don't know, maybe they're saving her you know, for like a time when they want to like boost the game because I know that Rookie is popular yeah, overall for people that watch Bleach and yeah, I'm just amazed it's taken over a year for them to put a 5 star version of Rukia in the game. Uh, so Rukia is definitely in at number one. Um, she has to be in the game. You know, if you're gonna have Chad and Uryu as 5 stars and you know, Renji even, you know, you have to have, you have to have Rukia. Like, how can you have Orihime as a 5-star and not have Rukia? So they're definitely going to put Rukia in the game at some point. Uh, the only question is, what version? And since they've waited this long, guys, I feel like they should use the Fullbringer Rukia that you see on the screen here, because I think, in my opinion, this is my favorite version of her. Uh, she's got the Vice Captain badge on her arm. Uh, I like the white gloves. Uh, she just, she, I think this is the most appealing design of Rukia that, in my opinion, that, that Kubo's done. So, Rukia in at number one. Alright guys, well that's my list of characters I want to see pretty soon. There are quite a few other possible characters uh, they could put as five stars. I'm guessing that they would be different versions of characters that are already in the game, like maybe different versions of, you know, of, uh, of maybe Kenpachi, you know, like maybe the one with, with his shirt off, or with Byakuya, um, you know, where he was fighting Yami and he lost his captain coat. And I think that's the way they would go rather than, you know, making unpopular characters five stars. So those are my thoughts on the future of uh, BBS gotchas. Uh, obviously, they're going to do filler gotchas with filler characters, and uh, they're going to do event gotchas, like the one we had for summer, for Halloween, for New Year's. But as far as canon characters go, um, I feel like the future five stars will just be different versions of popular characters. So um, it's unlikely you'll see a five star like Wonderwise or a five star Zomari, um, even though those characters are, you know, they could be done. They're not very popular and they're not really integral to the block. So I doubt you'll ever see characters like that become five stars. But who knows, guys? Um, you know, I, I really hope they do a few more canon characters before they jump into the Fullbringer arc. But um, we'll see what happens, guys. All right. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. And uh, let me know what you think. Uh, we'll see you next time, guys. Bye-bye.